I've been involved with uh, the bear immunology study group since 1999. Uh, that was one of the first uh, meetings. There was a previous meeting uh, with Kurt Wise that s started it earlier, but um, the first uh, meeting where it was opened up uh, to more scientists, I was at that first meeting at Liberty. Um, and I've been to every one since. And so uh, because of my involvement uh, each year, I just naturally became part of the executive council, kind of grandfathered in. Uh, well, the, the research questions that I'm most interested in uh, would be what is a bearman, baraman, and, um, and looking at the various criteria that uh, the scientists involved in this group are uh, interested in uh, to, to try to ascertain what the baraman, the baraman is, um, whether it's hybridization uh, data, uh, what breeds with what and has fertile offspring, or uh, paleontological data, um, the, uh, the statistical baromenology, those types of things. Uh, but the one aspect of baromenology that most interests me would be the problem of natural evil. Because as a biologist, I look at uh, life and everywhere you look you see uh, predation, parasitism, um, pathology, uh, and you see that ecology at every level is just riddled with death and, um, and all of these relationships that cause death. And I know that in a pre-fall world, it was nothing like that. So the, one of the first questions that occurred to me was, um, what was the original creation like? Uh, it was nothing like we see now. Uh, and God created it all good, all very good. And yet ecology pre-fall was radically different. And so what was the, you know, we call this uh, uh, natural evil pathogens, parasites, predators, we call that natural evil. And, um, and we see some of the most uh, extraordinary design in the living world is natural evil, whether it's nematocysts in uh, jellyfish, whether it's venom glands and uh, fangs of pit vipers and other poisonous snakes, all very sophisticated, uh, many sophisticated arsenals that we know are not the result of just um, degenerative mutation. We see exquisite design. And so one of my questions is, uh, when was it designed? And uh, I've come to the conclusion that it was, it was built in to the original creation but wasn't manifested until after the fall, um, that the genetics were all there. I don't think there was a second creation. I, uh, I don't mind other people having different views, but I, I think it was all genetically pre-programmed in the original creation, but then was uh, not manifest uh, until after the fall. And somehow uh, these malignant uh, morphologies were then expressed in various creatures that we call parasites or uh, predators. So that's, that's a question I really am interested in. The area that I've uh, most benefited from is the, 
is just getting to know scientists of like mind and also to see that uh, creationists are not pretend scientists or second-rate scientists. I see highly educated, highly competent men and women who uh, really understand their field of expertise and know how to do science. Now, just like um, any paradigm, you're going to have um, scientists that are really good and scientists that aren't so good. Uh, just because you're a creationist doesn't necessarily make you a great scientist. Uh, it might mean that you have the right worldview, but that doesn't make you a great um, master of the scientific method. And, but uh, it's just been a privilege to know some of these uh, scientists that are really good, and they do good research. Um, and one thing that I've uh, enjoyed um, seeing and we heard about it this morning from uh, Leonard Brand's talk, that having a better worldview uh, uh, allows you to ask much better questions of natural phenomena, uh, questions that would never occur to an evolutionist, even if an evolutionist is a good scientist. In other words, they're, they're very good at going through scientific methodology. They, they, um, because of being, um, because of holding the wrong paradigm, they don't ask the right questions. And uh, it's just great to see good scientists um, ask the right questions. And they are equipped to go about uh, designing the experiment and gathering the data, analyzing the data, coming to uh, very, very good conclusions. I, I like to see that and I like interacting with uh, my baromenology colleagues and, and other uh, scientists that, that do that and do a good job of it. In any field, you have to uh, be disciplined. And uh, those young, budding uh, naturalists who are interested in God's creation that are, um, you know, reading some of these popular magazines like Answers. Um, let them, let those, um, those periodicals just uh, stoke the, the fire of curiosity. But as a student, in order to be a, a contributor, uh, you need to uh, you need to exercise a lot of discipline. So I encourage any uh, young people out there that are interested in God's creation. Uh, it says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, mind, and soul. And so um, I tell uh, students to be good students, uh, whether they're in a a Christian school, be the best student you can be. Know it well because um, those are the people that will um, add to our army. We, we, we have such a small army of creation scientists and I'd like to see in a generation or two that uh, that army of creation scientists just grow exponentially because right now it's just very hard to have um, you know, adequate peer review because there's so few uh, uh, specialists in any particular field. We need to just generate an army so that we can have the checks and balances and the peer review process that really um, provides the accountability that we need to make uh, creation science top notch. We need to build that army and we need to build it to, to glorify God in, in, in how we do science. We don't want to do slipshod or shoddy uh, science. So we need, we need more. And um, I tell 
people who are, um, you know, some creationists have this idea that about evolution, uh, kind of like those three monkeys, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, and they, they want to shut themselves off from understanding the, the enemy. And in the principles of uh, war, you need to know your enemy. You need to understand your enemy to defeat your enemy. And so um, as a undergraduate and graduate student in the biological sciences,